Hi, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I am Kendall. And I'm Janelle. We are back. It feels like it's been a little while for us, Mm -hmm. even though it probably didn't feel that way for you guys, since we did have an episode go live last week, but we had pre-recorded it. That's right. Yes. You went on a little trip. I did. On a rocket ship. It was Joshie's 29th birthday. A little trip on a rocket ship. (laughs) I wish it was on a rocket ship. The sky, Imagine the if I could get Josh sky. a rocket ship trip. Uh, best yeah. girlfriend ever. Wife. Be- you and Jeff Bezos. <laughs> best girlfriend ever. Good God. No, instead uh, we had some flight credit. So we went to Seattle because it was on uh, Alaskan Airlines. So there's not many options. Alaska. Oh, uh, I thought yes. you felt, uh, flew Delta. On the way home. Oh, yes. anyways. Okay. But yeah, it didn't go so well. Didn't go so well. <laughs> Biggest fail of a trip ever. Dude, I felt so bad for you. I felt so bad for Josh. And Seattle's such a cool city. So Josh's parents live in Washington and like greater Washington area. So we went out there to visit them, but we were also gonna, you know, spend his birthday downtown, do the things. Yeah. There's so much to do there. Um, you know, Pike's Place Market. It looks really cool. It is. It's a gorgeous city. Um, but the <sighs> second we got off the flight, Josh was just dripping <laughs> snot, like just bad and he was like babe i feel oh. really sick and then by nighttime i could tell he was like it was just bad because uh. he doesn't get sick very often yeah. and so then we started freaking out like is it possible he could be word. one of those rare i mean he's vaccinated yeah. but you never yeah. know there's always that know. chance so we're like okay we have to like quarantine in this hotel now so that's what we did we literally hung out in our hotel for three days well we got the covid test the next day we got two negative that's we good. did a doctor consult and he was like yeah it's probably just a cold yeah um which it was it was a gnarly gnarly uh, cold like bad he had a fever at one point yeah he's still just sounds, miserable uh it's like congestion a little. yeah yep he got it pretty bad and so yeah we couldn't go anywhere i mean even if it's not covid it right. doesn't look good to be walking around and it's just <laughs> dangerous sniffling and yeah. it's just like disrespectful you, you feel like shit right you, so exactly you don't want to like do anything and that's the worst when you're on vacation like yeah. you're so bad like fuck like I maybe i can just suck it up and go out but then yeah. it's like you're miserable you're better off just staying it's there was just no way he could and yeah. i felt so bad because he's been working so hard especially on our business higher love he just needed this break and to really celebrate his birthday and the poor guy is just we spent all the all our time in seattle in bed um we did you know tons of doordash and mm-hmm. just which was you know, you can't really get the best stuff there, like the iconic things really? in Seattle. On, thought, not that many. Because when you told me that, I was like, mm, that'd be kind of fun to sit in the hotel and just order <laughs> a bunch of DoorDash because I feel like it's all new places and like Some of it local was good. crap, but no. There was this really good restaurant like across the street called Japanessa. I think that's how you say it, but we had that twice and that was really okay, good. But was- we've had some that was just kind of, it was just sushi. Oh, yeah. uh, it was, that was pretty good. We did try to adventure out at one point and we just ended up at this mall and we were like, let's go shopping and maybe that'll make you feel better for your birthday. Buy you a few things, mm-hmm. you know, and he was feeling a little better at that point. And this was before I got sick. Mm-hmm. And we went to this mall. And I think because of the pandemic, so many of the stores have shut down. There was like three stores. It was Lush, uh, Zara, and there was in, like a few in other. A Seattle mall? And in Nordstrom Rack. Yeah. At least the one we went to, which was Westgate. I think there's plenty of yeah, other sure. malls, but whatever weird. we went to, I don't know if it's just a tiny, tiny mall. But there was no store. So I I mean, luckily for me, I got to go to Lush. So I was happy. <laughs> I got to take a bath. Did that you have night. a bathtub? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was nice. I, I took at least three or four baths while I was in Seattle. But that's really all we did. We drove out to his parents' house and visited them. And as soon as we got out there, I went down. Dude. Yeah. And luckily, I didn't get it as bad as him. I never got a fever. Yeah. And I took a COVID test negative both times. We had just like a box of rapids with us because we were so paranoid. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but yeah, it was just miserable. And then the next day I had to fly home like sick as fuck. You know, That's it was the worst. awful. It was awful. And then, you know, it's like in your mask, like dripping uh, down your face. Uh, so it was like the biggest fail of a trip. Like I just and you felt feel like, weird making like snotty sounds. Yeah. Cause people are gonna be like, what the fuck? Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and it's like how I have to get home. And so, yeah, it really felt like constantly exhausting like it really wasn't a vacation or a trip at all and then we came back and it's monday and it's like right back at it and shit's just been so crazy lately i mean luckily while i was in seattle it was while so many things were happening with gabby petito's case which i'm sure so many of you are aware of yes so i at least like basically worked while i was there just taking notes and trying to follow what was going on 
it you was need to keep up with first, yeah. especially the first couple of days. Yeah. Last couple of days have chilled out a little bit, but it's been just every day, something new and crazy is coming out. So it's just been kind of exhausting. And we just posted a video on Gabby's case with everything so far. Mm-hmm. That was a lot. Yeah. Um, Cause we, we, you know, we need we, to get it out quick. Yeah. Cause you want to stay on top of it and make sure that we're not putting out outdated or incorrect yeah. information. So like, usually you'll film a video and then like, Six days later, it goes live. Yeah. So we have time to really work but with it. We were like, we can't post it six days no. later because what if something else and then you're going to look like you're behind. Yep. Like, we don't want that. So I had to record it Tuesday night when the last of the information came out for the day. Then Janelle edited all day, <sighs> dropped it off for me at eight. Yeah. And then I edited from eight to 2 a.m. <laughs> and then I just like, I think it was because of all the footage. I mean, it was just so intense that I just had these ridiculous nightmares all night. Like just... I had a nightmare that Guys, Janelle's dog, little dog was, right yeah, here, little Charlie. I, even, I, I had a dream that Josh and I were chilling in our living room. And all of a sudden I looked over and Charlie's just like walking around the kitchen. And I was like, whoa, Janelle must have left Charlie here. That's so weird. And then he started transforming into this like devil dog, coyote looking thing, like half devil body dog. and was like dragging blood around the floor Dude, in that the bathroom. Is fucking scary. What it the was, hell? It was terrifying. And in my dream, me and Josh were just like staring at this creature, like screaming. And then Josh woke me up last night and was like, babe, you're screaming. And I was like, dude, Charlie was fucked up in our house. And it that was crazy. Is so terrible. And it's the only time that's ever happened to me. Did I don't he look ever... like Charlie? Like at first, like he looked yes, like this he was completely Charlie. And then he transformed into something. Oh my Dreams God. Are so weird. They're the weirdest things ever. And it just continued like all night. It was bad dream after bad dream. After oh, it's bad the dream. worst. I hate that dude. I think it's like also the full moon too. Like I've barely been sleeping. There's just so much chaotic energy. Does, does anyone else feel that? Yeah. Well, like, that? Uh, the like last week was really bad for me. I couldn't sleep at all. And I was having like really weird dreams and I don't dream ever. Like mm. well, I never remembered my dreams like ever. But when I do, they're always, I wouldn't always call bad. them always nightmares, but they're always not good. Like they're yeah. always uncomfortable or stressful or scary. That's terrible. Always. I, like, and I never like had, had this one night where I was just like over and over and over. And it was like the, yeah. all important people in my life were involved, but they were like turning on me. It's like so ridiculous. Yeah. That's how my night was. It was just like, chaos it felt like it didn't even rest and i don't have nightmares that often surprisingly so. that's good it was weird god damn yeah, i'm a little tired and then janelle and i just worked really hard doing a tiktok dance that really took okay. it out of us what the fuck that was some real respect work. to the tiktok dancer <laughs> <laughs> okay we, we did a very simple tiktok dance okay that i just am now. so tired yeah and it was actually hard to learn it <laughs> and i was a dancer for years growing up I'm like, damn, it's been that long where I can't even learn basic. Te- yeah, we'll insert Techniques. our, uh, our <laughs> I meant, uh, choreography. choreography. Yeah, I can. I could barely figure out when to do what. And then, yeah, it was tiring. Mm. I feel like drained now. I know. Same. It took us so many tries I was to get so it so right. out of breath. Oh my god, I was exhausted. Oh. But anyways, so we yes. it's worth it. We are happy to be here. We always feel energized after recording an episode of the sesh. So True. hopefully this is a nice brain cleanse. Mm-hmm. Um, although we are gonna be talking about a lot of spicy topics. Yes, we are. And the main topic today that we are gonna be talking about is e- accidental uploads mm-hmm. in the YouTube world. Mostly from I bloggers. guess bloggers. Yeah. yeah. There's only a few examples, but we're just gonna kind of dive into that. There's been a few yeah. recent accidental uploads that yeah. have been very disturbing. Absolutely. So you want to share thoughts on that? We've gotten a lot of requests. The whole idea of yeah, you know, up and then making this mistake, having to take it down, and then the repercussions of it, of mm-hmm. what happens. Yeah. Do people do it on purpose? I have a mm. conspiracy theory. You do. <laughs> but anyways, I could yeah, see it. I could see it, especially with the Ace family, which Mm -hmm. we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that. But Um, also, we have uh, a little update on Brittany, you guys. Yeah, this is big. This This came out yesterday. This is so awesome. Well, first off, on September 22nd, uh, a new filing requested the court remove Jamie Spears from the conservatorship immediately while her team creates a plan to get rid of the conservatorship entirely. And put in someone temporarily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we'll have to see if that actually happens. I guess her lawyer even called Jamie out because he has admitted that a public battle isn't in Britney's best interest, and he said he would eventually step down. Like, you know, that's old news now. But yeah, I mean, 
Will he actually step down? Will he be removed completely? I don't know. I wish we had any background in law and could understand this a little bit more because <laughs> I, <laughs> I've tried to understand it by reading things, but I still don't quite understand why it's taking so long. It, yeah. I don't know either. Well, I guess everything in court takes a long time, yeah, right? But why, why? I mean, well, I guess next week the petitions, both of them will be going to court and seen in front of a judge. So I don't know. I guess in the um, event that the judge doesn't ter- rule to terminate the conservatorship, she will be asked to set a hearing date at its soonest convenience, whatever that means. And I guess Jody Montgomery, who is her personal conservator at the moment, already told the court that she intends on creating a plan to terminate the conservatorship with mm-hmm. Bernie's medical team, which is huge. She needs her fucking. I can't even believe she doesn't have rights to her reproductive health. Well, None of her health. Absolutely nothing in her life she has any control mm-hmm. over. Yeah, it's absolutely But it sounds like terrible. it's just a matter of time until this is done mm-hmm. and she is free. Yep. But it's just like a lot of legality and In the good bullshit. news, she got a Netflix documentary, baby. Yeah, I saw that, but I've seen a lot of, um, you know, kind of people are confused whether or not she's involved in that one. People are concerned that maybe she isn't getting paid for it. That's the only thing is like, why... It's a little weird that she is coming out or she's in this documentary when she's still under conservatorship because like in Mm -hmm. theory, she she, can't agree to me. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping that that's not the case. I feel like Netflix would not jeopardize their name and mm-hmm. reputation of like if it w- if it came out and it was like hurtful to Britney in some way. It's hard because I've seen a lot of people make note of the fact that that last documentary, the one that just came out on yeah. Hulu, that that upset her and she saw it as embarrassing. Hmm. But I feel it's a double edged sword because it did bring so much more yeah. awareness and got things going so much quicker. So oh, I don't yeah. know how she feels about it, but I don't believe she's at this point released a statement regarding the Netflix documentary. I don't so know. who knows if she's happy about it or or at least has a say in it maybe you're not maybe she's not profiting off of it but maybe she has been involved as far as giving them information or connecting them to the right people sure, to sure, interview sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to get her story out in the way that she wants sure but yeah. she may not have anything to do with it and it could be them no. just taking an opportunity to profit off of yeah her. i wish true. we could know directly from her i know whether or not to support it true yeah that's a great point Maybe she'll come out when it's closer to coming or maybe we should come out and say something when it's closer to actually coming out, which I guess it yeah. premieres September 28th. So next week. OK. Um, And it's called Britney versus Spears. It's very interesting. That's an interesting title. It is. Britney versus Spears. Yeah. I don't know. And then I that's really interesting because the release date is right the day right before her um, next hearing in her conservatorship case. Oh, wow. So the document comes out and the next day she's going like, did they do that on purpose? I was going to say, I feel mm. like they, I think it was intentional. I think that was like their, like their whole idea was to make this documentary and then like it was going to go to trial. So that's why I'm hopeful that it will be like a good documentary for her. Like maybe she was involved with it or maybe she did mm-hmm. like, you know, tell them to go to certain people. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like that is high, like very intentional that they did that. Yeah, um, I do too. And yeah, maybe they, because, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, yeah, just because like, like this is like a newer picture of Britney too. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. I don't I, I was wondering about that too, but it doesn't, almost doesn't look like a, a picture. It looks like a painting maybe. But I wonder if it's like taken from something else. From something like recent. Yeah. Like, did she go in and have someone paint her? Is this like an old picture? I've never seen this picture as far as I'm aware or a picture like this. And she has hinted on Instagram about working on projects behind the scenes. Yeah. So whether or not they could have contractually got her involved and got her paid for this, mm-hmm. maybe she still had a hand in it and doesn't really care about money at this point mm-hmm. and just wants to get the correct information out in a way that's not embarrassing if she did see the last yeah. one as embarrassing. But who knows? She might have nothing to do with it. I, I think it's really interesting that the... um what is it cover art i guess for the documentary that picture she's like choking, choking herself mm-hmm. yeah it's like she's being silenced yeah it reminds it gives me like aerial vibes mm, mm-hmm. lost her voice oh so yeah 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 the um the director of this she also directed a f- she's directed a few other things like she does like mm. mostly um like female like Do- protagonists i guess sure yeah um okay. she she did a documentary for um, what was her name? Uh, Gypsy Rose. 
Oh. Mm. And then she was also involved with the one with Michelle Carter. With, mm. You know who that is? Nope. She was no. the girl that. She oh, was, yes. Yeah, yeah. She was and Conrad little, Roy. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. She, like, yeah. Oh, that Michelle Carter? Yeah. yeah. Oh, she was interesting. She made that one of the. I, I think she made the documentary that was on, that was on HBO. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. that's good that yeah, there's yeah. at least. So it, there is like. Hmm. I, I am hopeful that like she, she you knows she did that she has had contact with her. Right. But it's interesting that she has made like more true crime documentaries. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Josie right. Rose and, and Michelle Carter. Yeah, or, right. Uh, Conrad Roy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and they have point. fans have been referring to this project possibly being in the works as Project Red. Mm-hmm. And the rumor began when she posted vague Instagram references using the color red. Right. She didn't she talk about something called Project Rose at one point? I think too? yeah. Remember we talked about that like yeah. weeks back. But maybe Project Red is Project Rose. Who yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm very confused and like, still. Even on her Instagram now, she's definitely posted like more like risque. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. She's, she's like talking like she's like yeah, mm-hmm. she's like talking about like my ass. She's like my ass looks so good in this. She's like she I, knows she's this close to she, freedom. Yes, and she's it's right like it's so there. it's so I don't know, like it's so crazy looking at it from like this outside perspective because she's like she's like like a caged animal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she's like so close to getting out, but like she's mm-hmm. so close. I and know. It, like I can't wait until she's like fully out of it. Yeah. It's close, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. And maybe we will learn new things that haven't been out about what she's been through over the years yeah, through this documentary. See. Should we watch the trailer for it? Yeah. Can we? Can we play it? In? Do you think it'll get copyrighted? I though? think it'll get oh, copyrighted. This is Netflix. Netflix. This yeah. Is Netflix. Yeah. yeah they're okay. going to shut our asses down. I we'll link it below. Pay. We'll link yeah. it below for you guys. We'll put it in there. Let's go ahead and do a little ad ski break and we will be right back. Yes, we will. Talking about our first YouTuber. Guys, life is stressful enough and access to health care shouldn't be. But luckily, getting birth control is one less thing that you have to worry about with the Pill Club. With Pill Club, you'll never have to make a trip to the doctor for birth control or wait in line at the pharmacy for your pills ever again. Because they provide access to care from the comfort of your home and delivery right to your door in discreet packaging. The Pill Club is a birth control subscription prescribed by a medical professional and delivered straight to your door for free. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA approved brands and most brands of birth controls are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $9 per month without insurance. And what's great is their licensed medical team is just a text away to give you the best reproductive health care. So skip the office visit and waiting in line at the pharmacy and join the Pill Club instead. Right now, when you go to thepillclub.com slash sesh, the Pill Club is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every sesh listener who becomes a patient. And your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's thepillclub.com slash sesh to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember, thepillclub.com slash sesh. You must use that link in order to make your donation. Guys, everyone needs an escape, but those can be very hard to come by right now. I feel like the world is a crazy place, and it's hard to just take a moment to yourself, but that is where Dipsy comes in. Let yourself get lost in a world where good things happen and where your pleasure is the only priority. I love Dipsy. It's such a cool app, you guys. It's an audio app full of short, sexy stories designed to turn you on. Spicy. Each Dipsy audio story features characters that feel like real people in immersive scenarios. So you feel like you're right there. Listen to stories about hooking up with your hometown crush you never made a move on or that coworker you always had a little thing for. Or maybe a story that puts you in bed with someone who's telling you exactly what they'd like to do to you. They release new content every week, so there's always more to explore no matter who you're into or what turns you on. And after you listen to your little spicy story and need something to help wind down, Dipsy also has wellness sessions, sensual bedtime stories, and soundscapes to help you relax before you drift off. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash sesh. That's a 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash sesh. Dipsystories.com slash sesh. All right, so our next topic of the day, we are going to be chatting a bit about Miss Nikita Dragon, who yes. has been stirring the pot. Stirring the pot. She has. Yeah. She's been. She. Yeah. Think she's a celebrity. Yeah. Pop star. She Pop star, exactly. Pop star. So she has been making comments about how she would like to be called the first trans pop star instead of an influencer. <laughs> However, she has only put out one song Mm -hmm. and it was released on Instagram. 
with her own kind of like homemade music video situation. Yeah, why was it check released it out. on Instagram? Can we check it out? Yeah, let's check her out. Let's see if we can put even just a little bit of it. I don't know if she's oh, copywriting it. it. So just to warn you, uh, there's um, some language, but whatever. You're watching this show, yeah, so you're what used the hell? to it. <laughs> okay. Hide your kids, hide your wife. You think she edited this herself? out there on that one mix okay doesn't even sound like her very interesting Uh, yeah i did i really didn't see that coming i just want to know why every person who has a following feels like they need to become a pop star yeah it's really getting she's been making all these comments that she wants to be the first trans pop star no you are not going to be that and she is not that she is not that there have been other pop stars who are trans Mm -hmm. who are famous and And she changed her name Oh, yeah. She changed her fucking name on Twitter and on Instagram. You've got to be um, kidding me. Venus, yeah, to Extra- Venus Extravaganza. <gasps> that is yeah. so fucked up. If you don't know, Venus Extravaganza was a trans person who was murdered mm-hmm. a long time ago. Yeah, she was a performer. And yeah, that's like, so disrespectful. And like what the, the fuck? Like the, Why? The, even that message is like super unclear. It's like, are you supporting or like, like, I don't understand the message, I guess. Right. Maybe she's it's trying to say she is. But like, you're not. But yeah, that you're literally yeah. not. Yeah. That's just weird to do to anyone. I feel like I don't know, especially someone who was murdered. So she but. she said that this was supposed to be something kind of you know empowering to other trans people out there. Uh, that's what she was going for. But she really okay. missed the fucking mark, like big time. Yeah. Um. I mean, she showed all these pictures, like we said, of her ex flings, partners, friends with the word "dick" over their faces. Mm-hmm. So like publicly outing some of these people yeah and she um, even included a dm from tyga <laughs> of course she did because she wants it to look like he's in her dms mm-hmm. uh, yeah. she posted a little text me and then it's you know covers up the rest of what it says with dick however tyga made a statement and said my company shot and directed a music video for her a while back that never dropped not sure why she added my likeness to this mm. then that's she, just so low and then he called her some kind of like clout monster oh did he oh, yeah, yeah i think i heard about that yeah I mean, she's quite a clout go- goblin. I think we can all agree. Absolutely. And that's the thing is, I think she knew that this would get, she does things. She's had a history of saying things that I think she purposely does because it keeps her relevant. Yes. You know, the relevancy keeps slipping. And every time she does some scandal or does, you know, pushes it right. too far, then people talk about it. And her. I think that's like a lot of public figures are like oh well any publicity is good pub- publicity as long as i can keep people talking about me then i stay relevant so who cares yeah what it's yep. about which is an interesting thought i mean you do what you want but yeah i don't know the whole thing's just a little bizarre how she's coming out about it it's like mm-hmm. very aggressive <laughs> yeah and i mean to to add these pictures uh, it was a picture and a text of her ex michael yerger mm-hmm. who apparently is on reality tv and originally she had hired him to be her boyfriend for the launch of Dragon Beauty. And then they actually started dating after that, I guess. I mean, how do we really confirm right. all of this? This seems to be what... Alleged. It's all legend. Yeah. Right. Like, well, right. yeah. yeah. Then she posted a video and was like, oh, he was just using me to climb the social ladder and he yeah, cheated on me and now. blah, blah. Yep. So he has a new girlfriend and she included a picture of her as well mm-hmm. in the video. Yeah. And they both commented on the music video <laughs> Being like, have you heard of meditation? I hear it's a great spiritual doctor for you. Yeah. <laughs> and then she replied and she's like, how's my pee-pee taste? And then he was like, honestly, <laughs> just feel bad for you at this point. And then she was like, but you were just telling Tana and Ari, you wished your new girl could something, something like me. 
a lot of blurred out things. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we can, you know, fill the blanks yeah, here. Fill the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> so she's obviously been getting a ton of backlash from the video in general. I mean, mm-hmm. she really missed the mark attempting to make this some type of empowering message for trans people in the trans community. And many, many of them have been vocal about how they do not, you know, own her yeah. or not. That's not the claim word her here. claim her. Yeah. Yeah. They I don't claim she, this. Yeah. yeah. They want nothing to do with this. They don't like how she's going about it. And they do not think she the majority. I'm sure there's people out there that think she's doing a great job, but it seems the majority seem to think that this was the completely wrong way of going about it. Totally mm-hmm. insensitive. The worst and part dangerous. of it is she, after this comes out, she goes on Instagram in an attempt to spread a positive message, post pictures of trans women who have passed with the title of her song on their faces, which is like unbelievably that is disgusting, shocking. including Marsha P. Johnson, who is, is a or was a huge activist in the mm-hmm. Stonewall uprising, and it's literally her face with the word "dick" on her eyes. It's absurd. It's almost I feel like obnoxious in the sense of like, how low do you have to go, and like, what, where is your like? Do you have any sort of respect for any of these people? Or I mean, I don't even know if she does for herself. I you know, but it's I don't know. I it's just, like, what are you really trying right, to like, do here? Do, do you, you feel really want to help right. empower After doing that to right. all these people? Like, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I feel like she was trying to recreate that moment years ago, which I thought was a pretty cool thing when um, Victoria's Secret made that statement that they weren't going to allow trans women to walk in the show. Yeah. So she filmed her own fantasy. Yeah, she like basically made her own commercial. For yeah, it, it was actually it was, pretty badass. And yeah. It was very Thanks. well received and it yeah. was empowering, I think, yeah, to a lot of people. It was fucking and badass. But then, like, she's gone downhill since there. Yeah. But also, I would like to address the fact that people are misgendering her as some type of diss because they don't like her, which is fucking ridiculous. And completely yeah, unnecessary. Is. Like, you don't so, misgender somebody just as, like, a disrespect. Why are we stooping to that level? Yeah. That is yeah. just so... Even if they're the worst person in the world, you just don't do that. Absolutely not okay in any mm-hmm. way. It's like, I can't believe people are, like, really? We're gonna have to have this talk? Like, oh my god, it's ridiculous. So, anyways. It really is. Also, what kind of, like, kind of, like heaved me off off a little bit more not more but like additional additionally (laughs) was that she posted a picture of sophie and sophie's like this huge pop star she's also trans she she just died this year and so like like in Mm. all like all these women that she posted pictures of at least most of them all have if not i think i think most of them have passed away um they all died like really tragically. Marsha P. Johnson. Yeah. And then yep. um, who was it? I think Amanda Lapori. I think um, La Veneno, the, the Spanish yeah. singer. Mm-hmm. I think she La like Veneno. fell out of a fucking window or something. Oh my so, like, God. None of, like none of their deaths were normal, that, like, I guess yeah. you could say. I don't know. I feel like she could have approached it in a completely and different even way. If she seems to think that to her dick is some type of empowering word. And she's trying to like kind of take it back, almost like taking back the word bitch, slut. Yeah. you know, or slut mm-hmm. or something. Um, you don't get to label other people with this word that you've decided is for you and empowering for you. And then write on people who have been murdered and write dick across their yeah, face. Because they not cannot okay. speak for themselves whether they whether they want to associate yeah. with with that word, I guess, or not. It's not up to Nikita to do this basically to the entire trans community, I feel. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like it's like you can't you can't make that you can't take back that word for everybody. You can take it back for yourself, for yourself. but keep it Keep it to yourself. Yeah, right. you know I mean? Exactly. Like, don't drag other people yeah. into this. And then all these other exes and stuff who've been dragged, which I'm sure some of them have been have treated her badly. Does that mean they deserve to be like publicly doxxed? Yeah. No. I mean, like, she needs to make an apology to all of those people and everyone else that she included in that video. But I don't think she gives a fuck. She no, literally does not care. No, she doesn't. And she never apologizes for anything. She never really has. She's always been that person that just ignores things until it goes away. Mm-hmm. Until the next scandal. Yeah, um, it's so wild. she's it's al- really also been getting a lot of shit because she made a statement about how uh, influencers are celebrities, and right. anyone who doesn't think they're celebrities, they need to get over it. Mm-hmm. I think we have a clip. Yeah, let's Why watch go a little clip. That. If you have a problem with influencers at the Met Gala, influencers in fashion, influencers doing music, influencers creating business, get the f- over it. Bitch. Like literally, get the f- over it. I am just so tired of seeing comments of people being like, oh my God, why are they inviting influencers to the Met Gala? Oh my God, why are they letting influencers model? Oh my God, why are they, uh, why are influencers creating so many beauty brands, whatever? It's like, get the f- over it. I'm so 
tired of this like narrative about influencers not being celebrities. Why do influencers think we're celebrities? Because we are. We really are. <laughs> it seems like it's so frustrating because this is such a non-issue. Like what a dumb thing to be bitching about and trying to make a statement about. If you want to be this activist and speak for other trans women and men, then be an activist. Be that person. Stop yeah. wasting your time being like, I'm so famous. The first trans pop star. I mean, it's all about you. Yeah. It's always been all about her. She's not a good role model for anybody. No, she's I really, not. I mean, it's, she's just continued to get worse and her lack of caring about something as serious is, uh, this she, whole has so so much, she has so much potential. Yeah. She has yeah. so much potential to like mm -hmm. really like stand up for like, for the trans community in general. Yes. And just yes. like, she has a lot of power. She has so much, like she has so much influence and she's mm -hmm. literally using it all for the like wrong, she's all wrong. Like if I'm, I'm not, I, I can only imagine putting myself into their shoes and like in that community. But if I was a trans person or this, just whatever, women's rights whatever community blm whatever if the, is this figure that's really powerful is doing that i would feel like really let down by them yeah. and really like like we need you what a missed you know? opportunity right. really yeah exactly yeah. yeah i completely agree and it's it sucks that people like her end up getting so much attention and like they when only get more nothing. because they're yeah. literally just doing worse and oh worse yeah things. she knows yeah. the recipe it's worked for her over the years plenty of times she doesn't care so yeah, there was a lot of talk about the Met Gala and influencers being there, which a lot of influencers were. Mm -hmm. And at one point, a fake um, seating chart had come out and Nikita was on that. And that was when she posted this video because I think she thought maybe it was real yeah. or thought she, she maybe kept, was like, going to go to the Met. tweets like, yeah. she'd be like, oh, I'm just running a little late. Be right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She never went. She but never, yeah. I don't think she was invited. She was never no, invited. She wasn't invited. If she was invited, she would have gone. But She's a, a celebrity lot, though. A lot of influencers were there. Emma wow. Chamberlain, who goddamn, she oh looked my God. gorgeous. She looked unbelievable. Like, my favorite look, I think. I th yeah, same. Her, eye, her eyeshadow looked it was stunning. Uh, she looked so fucking good. And her interviews were so good. She was mm -hmm. so like not. I'm like, God, how are you not like shitting your pants? And maybe she Literally. was. And just was like, <laughs> if you like, watch her vlog, she's oh, she's such an anxious person. I, yeah. I don't know how she can go out and do that. Like she seems fairly introverted. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's just her vlog, but oftentimes she they're just at like home it. and by herself. Yeah. And so I'm sure that was like so stressful, so but badass. she handled it so well. She looked amazing. Yeah, she looked amazing. Addison Rae was also there. Uh, Nikki Tutorials was there. Yep. Dixie D'Amelio. Is it is Demi it D'Amelio? D'Amelio? I don't, I don't really know. know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I watched the rest of that show. It only gets worse really? after episode one. Yeah, that oh, shit is so that. depressing. You, you watched it? it? What did you think? Okay, so my mom, it was like really into the whole TikTok. Oh, yeah. I remember you said, yes, she so, was into Hype House. Oh, yes. And so <laughs> she, basically, dude, her mom she had, had Hype merch. House merch. Yep, she wears her uh, tie-dye merch, but. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, so we're Icon. watching it and I could, I had to turn it off because it, the, I mean, it, it wasn't bad because I felt, I feel bad for them that like yeah. what, you know, all that backlash, Stressful like I don't really know all the drama. details, but all the pressure, the voices were starting to get to me. So I was like, okay, and too much drama. Like I didn't, all oh, this yeah. drama that was like, well, it's all just sad. It's like just sad it, thing exactly. after sad thing. Like the mom sitting there pressuring her, pressuring, um, oh, what's the older one? I'm sorry. Charlie. Charlie. No, Charlie's, no, no, no. Charlie's, Dixie's, the, Charlie's Charlie. younger. Dixie's older. That's why oh. Dixie was at the Met because Dixie's 18 wow. and Charlie's not. Oh, big confusion on my part. It, yes. I always thought Charlie was the older one. No, she's no, not. Okay. That's not right, mate. Okay, that makes a lot more she's sense the now. And she actually does seem younger. Okay. But anyway, um, at, in one of the episodes I was watching last night, her mom was pressuring her to get into dance. And she was mm. like, kind of just sitting like, you could tell she just doesn't want to do it. Dude. And her mom is putting so much on her. And it's like, how dare you after everything these girls, like the pressure, it's got to be so bad for their mental health at this age. Yeah. And now knowing Charlie's the younger one, that, that makes me feel even worse for her. And let's all remember, they're the reason why their parents are rich and quote famous now. Yeah. So and live in a $14 like million dollar house in yeah. LA. Yeah. Like... How much more can you use and exploit your children? Which is what we'll be talking about a little bit more today. Mm -hmm. that, okay, so that makes sense why Dixie was there and Charlie wasn't. Yep. I didn't see Dixie's Neither outfit. Did I. I have no idea. I think oh, my favorite oh, you outfit. You didn't see it? No. no. Oh. Is okay, it? In, wait, let me yeah, look let me see. Look it up. She looked like a like a big bird. Big, a big bird. bird. She looked like a like a yeah like a crow bird. A crow bird. A, cr what? a big crow bird. Oh. 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 oh yeah. Not like yellow big bird. Not yellow, like a yeah, big a bird. Crow, yeah. Like a big bird. <laughs> oh, it's kind of like There's Audrey feathers. Hepburn meets bird. Okay. Meets <laughs> bird. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> meets crow. Damn. That is a lot of feathers. Interesting. What was your okay. just while we're talking about Met Gala? What were your favorite looks? 
by far Emma was my favorite. I was obsessed with Lil Nas X's outfits. He's yeah. like three reveals. Um, that was good. Um, I'm trying to remember. Do you see ASAP Rocky in the quilt? Oh yeah, he like <laughs> brought a blanket. Brianna, right? Homie literally wore yeah. a blanket. That's okay, amazing. Side note: like 98 percent of the men there are dressed so normal, and I'm like, you're going to a wedding. You're going to a wedding. Yeah, like what? Yeah, <laughs> what the hell is this? This is the Met Gala. Yeah, like I all mean, these other people, ma- majority of them women are like, step in the fuck out. Yeah, you better look like a superhero, or you got to have something, a blanket. Something at least interesting. Came looking like a king, and then he was like a robot, and then he was like a glitter. You know who I think so looked absolutely stunning too? Who? Billie Eilish. Oh, she did. Oh my gosh, that dress was so beautiful, she so did. classy. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was really pretty beautiful. Yeah. So Nikita didn't get a go though. That's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> But she's a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, mm, it's pretty cringy, everything with Nikita. I mean, I think people are just pretty over her at this point. I almost never see Nikita fans when I'm scrolling things. Like, really? It just seems like people are generally just disgusting. Yeah, at this honestly, point. I would agree with that. Yeah. It's yeah. Got, there don't. were plenty of fans at one point, but I think most people have realized her true intentions and her. I just don't think her intentions drive are very good. Her fame. Yeah, it's like just all she cares about. Which I'm like, all right it's kind of a shame that you yeah. you know have all this like we said have all this empowerment and blah 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 but and it'd know. be so much better for her life too if she was putting out positivity and lifting up others that makes you feel better yeah probably it would yeah. if she'd try it just saying if she'd try it true that <laughs> all right well before we get into accidental youtuber uploads we're mm-hmm. going to take one more ad break Hello, I'm back to talk about HelloFresh. One of my favorite sponsors. I truly love HelloFresh, you guys. Because the HelloFresh. They HelloFresh. I've been using HelloFresh for a long time, and they are, in my opinion, the best meal kit delivery service. There is nothing worse than hitting five o'clock and you have no idea what to cook for dinner and you have no ingredients in your fridge to put a meal together. So you have to go out to the store and get all the ingredients, come home, prep them, cook them, blah, blah, blah. Or you have to, you know, get fast food. But with HelloFresh, you don't have to worry about that anymore because you have pre-portioned ingredients and little, very easy to use information cards right in your fridge waiting for you to get cooking. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every single week, from vegetarian meals and calorie smart choices to extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy. And I truly believe that. I have tried many HelloFresh meals and I have never found one that I didn't like. They're really good, they're really unique. And their recipes are tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. And the fall harvest is on, folks. It's really here. First day of fall was yesterday, and we're getting cranking into the colder months. And so you can count on seasonal recipes like pumpkin cinnamon rolls and friends giving ready sides, as well as fresh, high quality ingredients that travel from the farm to your front door in less than a week. That's another reason why I love it. It doesn't go to the grocery store and sit on the shelf for a week before you pick it up and bring it home. It goes right to your house. So the produce is super nutrition dense. So go to HelloFresh.com slash SESH14 and use code SESH14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash SESH14 and use code SESH14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, baby. All right. So we have had a lot of requests to talk about Jordan Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. Um, For those of you who don't know, Jordan has been on YouTube for a long time. She had about 500,000 subscribers. Her channel's either deleted right now or just like disabled. So you can't see it. Nope. Um, But I actually used to talk to Jordan a long time ago, back when I first was on YouTube, kind of in the beauty space, Mm because she would collab with a lot of different people. So I was always trying to like Remember that was like the cult thing was such a, it was was such a thing. Yeah, it was. Oh my God. And then, um, you know, I, I used to watch her content and then over the years I had to unsubscribe because it became so triggering to my eating disorder. Because a lot of her content was very um, questionable diet tips and crash diets, unsafe ways of losing weight, like how to lose, you know, 10 pounds in two days or, you know, ridiculous stuff like that. That was just triggering to even see the thumbnails. So I lost touch with her back then and forgot about her. And then this went crazy. So I guess she became more of a vlogging family lifestyle channel. I do remember when she had her son a long time ago because he was premature. 
And it was a really scary time. I yeah. remember people were really following this story. And Jordan's always talked about how she tries her best to be a good mother and she, you know, wants the best life for Christian possible. He's her only son. Mm -hmm. However, she took it way too far recently. They got this new puppy from a breeder. Mm -hmm. And according to her, the puppy already had Parvo, mm -hmm. which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of Parvo. It's very it's a, deadly. <sighs> yes. It's it, very expensive to treat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, it's, and it's really, if it's been going on for a while, like you have to catch it early yeah. on enough to save them. And I don't know if we've gotten an update on the dog because she's know. been completely offline. Yeah. However, they found out that the dog had these issues. Uh, I believe it also had fleas all over it. And she had to drop the dog off at the vet and she and her son in the car, obviously her son was really upset. Um, she, he was old enough for her to tell him what was going on. Yeah. And he, he was, was crying. visibly upset. Yeah, obviously. I mean, any kid would be right. You have this new puppy and you find out they might die and you have to go drop them off at the vet. So yeah. he was totally upset. And this was on September 11th. Yeah. But she uploads this vlog of what had happened with the puppy and how their day has been so bad. And she leaves in a very large section of where she is coaching her son how to get the best thumbnail. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I mean, this went viral. It's wild. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen it because even like USA Today where yeah. it was talking about it. And oh, wow. it, it went news. It is. It went big. Jarring to see how like on camera she was. And then she's like, okay, we'll see you guys later. Bye. And then Amelia's like, okay, come for the thumbnail. Let's let's play the clip because yeah, it let's is just really play jarring. It. But just so you know, it is a little upsetting to watch. Just a yeah. warning before we go ahead and play cool. it. A little much. I know she's going to make it through. She's an amazing, beautiful little girl. And I can't wait for her to bring her home and be part of our family. So if you could pray for us, we appreciate it. I love you. Come here. Come closer for the video. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Put your head right here. Come closer. Put your head down here. Act like you're crying. Really quick. I didn't cry. Go like this. No, I'm not just usually crying. No, I know. But go like this for the video. Go like this. Put one hand up. Go like this. No, go like this. Put your hand like this. But let them see your mouth. Let them see your mouth. No, I'm actually crying. Look at me. 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 I know. Look at me. Look at me. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Dude so sad and just keeps going on and then she's like okay all right we're done we're done that's it that's it we're finally done yeah it's really sad she uploaded it oh my god i can't imagine finding out that you had uploaded that and we <laughs> cropped out christian's face in an effort to keep this it's already gone so viral yeah um i feel so bad Blur for this out. kid yeah. I, mean, I know i'm i hope he doesn't have full awareness of how viral this has gone and how much like hate their family has gotten how many people have seen it i hope he doesn't know that yeah, I hope so, too, because holy shit, that would be terrible. I'm hoping that she's keeping him off the Internet because after she did that, she like came back and like made this whole like apology mm -hmm. and was like, this was really bad. Like, I'm extremely disappointed in myself. But I feel like she kind of made it worse. Oh, she definitely made it worse because like, even with that, apology, she said those things. But she also said, you know, Please don't leave me any. Hey, I can't take it. Blah blah blah. And it's like, and dude, she literally, she you literally can't do that. Said that she chose being a YouTuber over being a mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which she realized it is interesting because we're in this age of giving apologies, and I feel like what it because if she would have gone on there and like not taken responsibility and said it was disgusting, I think people would have been mad. Like I, I feel like there's a little bit of like there's no right way to apologize online because you'll always get hey for not like backing her up no but it's a double-edged sword it's a way. very double-edged sword and i kind of looking at it from a bigger picture i feel like every apology is like bad like we've never like oh mm. it's a great apology so like <laughs> a few a what few. does that like entail i don't know it's just food for thought but yeah no i completely agree with you i just i think it's interesting to see how these things are made you know we've all seen vlog families who have their kids crying in the thumbnail, um, themselves crying in the thumbnail that is clearly posed. Mm -hmm. And we know that it happens, mm -hmm. but then it was still so shocking to see it. Mm -hmm. I think so many people aren't aware of how that kind of works. Sure. I guess as being someone in YouTube, I like aware that there are so many families that are doing so much worse than what Jordan did. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, 
they're not going to, if they don't make the mistake of uploading it, then they're not going to get the shit for it. Mm -hmm. It's just people don't like to see how the sauce is made. You know what I mean? Totally. And I guess that could be for like any content. Like if we just threw up raw footage of. Yeah. Well, making thumbnails is cringy no matter what. Me making my thumbnails is incredibly cringy. It is not. There is no uncringy way to do it. No. It's when your child is in it. Totally. I can't imagine. And when your child's. And when he's distressed. Right. When he's already having. Because that's fucking Mm -hmm. scary to almost lose your new puppy that you got. Like. And it's really kind of a shame that she blamed it on the puppy. She was like, I, I was so stressed out about the puppy. I wasn't thinking. I'm like, mm. well, you were thinking about how to get views over how to comfort your child in that moment. And you've been making thumbnails, including your child for years. It's right. not like you just, you just weren't thinking enough not to upload it. I mean, yeah. wow. What a fuck up. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. I know. It's, it's really, it's really bad. gross to see this, but I think people have to keep in mind that Jordan is one of many, many people that are doing this. I can't imagine having a child and forcing them to stand with me in my thumbnails and posing with them and trying to trying to make um, an event like this into something positive for your business. It's so weird to me that when these tragedies happen to vlog families, their first thought is to whip out the camera and start filming their trauma live yeah. in action because they know it's going to get more clicks. People are going to be more interested right. when something bad happens. Right, so right, they right. almost get you wonder if a part of them gets a little excited when things happen that they can there then use to clickbait right. and draw people or in. at least the thought of like, well, this sucks, but at least I can use this for footage today. Like, yeah. And, you know, mm-hmm. I did listen to Jordan's interview on the dad challenge podcast. We'll link it below if you want to hear kind of what she had to say for herself. It was pretty interesting. She talked a lot about how she got just so caught up in it over the years because she is a single mother. She feels like she has to provide for her son right. and it's part of her business. And she said that she just kind of got caught up in it over the years. But mm-hmm. to me, it's like my conscience would never leave me enough for me to ever do that to my kid. I just can't, I can't, it's hard to muster up that. any sympathy. Right, you know? Because it's like you, at the end of the day, you chose your yeah. job over your kid when yeah. they're going through something traumatizing. Like mm-hmm. they're losing a pet right now. And yeah. your like response is to be like, oh no, like come do it for views. Yeah. It's it, it's not genuine in that way. You know what and I mean? Like, are you no really gen- sorry? Yeah. Or are you just sorry you got caught doing it? Because hmm. like know? even the way she's talking to him is so like, all right, come on, come on, come on. All right, we're done. Yeah. Go ahead, we're done. So fast. And it's like, you, you're not gonna like, you're not gonna like, you know, coddle your son. Yeah. Right. You know, I wonder how much, you know, she's like playing up emotion even to how she flipped from that last scene of like, we really want to bring her home. Please pray for us. And she's like crying to just as soon as the camera cuts or she thinks it's cut. Uh She just snaps right in. Okay. uh, Thumbnail mode. Come on, come over here. Hold my, hold your hand here. Hold your hand like this. Well, he's like, you can tell she's well seasoned in the vlogging world. Like it's not her first time making a thumbnail like it didn't even seem like it registered as like a bad thing in her mind and it's like if you want to take a thumbnail of yourself crying to bring in the views whatever it's a free country you can do whatever you want but when you bring your child into it there's a serious fucking problem and i'm just happy that she has deleted all of her stuff i hope she keeps christian off the internet she did say in the dad challenge interview that she plans to take him completely off let's hope we never i mean not that i don't want to see him again he's a lovely kid but Let's hope that he can have privacy for the remainder of his time living with Jordan, Mm -hmm. because that's just, oh, I can't imagine at that age. And can you imagine like your parent doing that to you? I cannot wrap my mind. If my dad, if we had just lost our dog or my mom came up and was like, okay, come here, come cry with me for this picture. Oh, no. How traumatizing that would be. And and he must have the ethics in his own mind of like, this feels wrong. And he knows. I mean, he's old enough to know why she's doing it. Yeah. But thinking about it, like thinking about it down the line, I feel like his ethics might be skewed in that way later on, like when he's older. Where they it's could like, be this, like these things. He's like, don't... is this normal? Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like, oh, like my pet. Oh, died. I should, I just, should I just take a picture of myself? Right. Like, of yeah. My, you know what I mean? Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just very, it's, it's interesting to see like where all these like family vloggers children are going to be yeah. 15 years from now, 10 years from now. You 100%. know what I mean? Because yes. it's like by that time they'll be adults and they will be able to. They're going to be like, what the hell is on the internet? Like like, you didn't, like they didn't choose that. And there are, there are several families who have older kids who've already spoken out against their parents and filmed videos about how it's like been extremely hard for them to be on the internet most of their lives and how they're stepping off. They don't want to be on the internet anymore. I know of at least two uh, teenagers who have done that. 
I can't think of their names off the top of my head, but it's gonna, we're going to see it more and more and more. Well, that's where the whole conversation of like, okay, so who's protecting these kids that are on and minors that are on family vlogs that are getting millions of views per video. Cause in traditional media, when you're an actor, a child actor, you have laws protecting you and yes. there are their structure of what can and cannot be expected of you. And that is not the case in YouTube mm -hmm. community in this, this whole new media vlogging your kids because there's no like protocol. And so, no. and I don't, and that's like a whole other conversation, but I don't really know like what the right answer is. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. There needs to be protection for these kids Absolutely. of some sort. It's, I don't really to. know like how you would do that because it's so you're not going into a studio. The yeah. camera's on you at all times. Like, yeah, you can't watch them what they're doing at home right. and make sure that they are working under a certain amount of hours. Exactly. There's no child labor laws. And you know, the just child entertainment industry is terrible as it is, but at least in Hollywood, there are some, some right. regulations. Not saying that there's terrible things don't happen, of course. All the time. It's just a bad Absolutely. place to be in general. But the fact that there's nothing no. in place for YouTube, right. this is a conversation that we want to have later on. Today yeah. we're focusing on accidental yeah, uploads. Accidental uploads. Let's let's move on from Jordan and talk about the Ace family's Ace, recent Ace, accidental Ace. upload, which they have done this before. They have definitely done this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> That's where my conspiracy comes in. I'll tell you about it Ooh. in a sec. Okay. Um, but anyways, on September 16th, the Ace family uploaded a vlog titled, Our New Dog Bit Our Baby. Scary moment. What the fuck? Which this is, is, I'm like, why? why all the dog shit? Yeah, yeah. And why would you... That is not something to be proud of or like totally around. Our, my dog bit my baby? Also... You're that desperate for views? I feel like it's a little dig at... Um, we talked about them last time. The, the people who killed their dog. Oh, the Philippines. I feel like that's yeah. I feel oh. like it's a little dick at the Philippines because it's like, our, oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Because their dog bit their, their, their baby and they didn't. You know what I mean? My brain, my brain went to. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right because when we watch this footage, we're gonna watch this accidental upload. You can tell there's a lot of stress between the two of them mm -hmm. about explaining the situation mm -hmm. and not wanting to look bad in any way about the dog biting the baby. Like they, right. they clearly are stressing out about how to get this right out. Right, 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 right. But at the same time, you don't need to tell anyone. We don't need to know. I mean, the, it's not like he was seriously injured. He got like a little nipped at. Right. We don't need to know this. Oh, The only reason not. you guys are putting this out here and you feel the stress to film it yeah. and how we're going to say it is because you want up, you want the views, you want people to click in for the drama and be like, yes. oh, the baby's face was bit? Click. Yes. You know, and it's when you actually see it, it looked like barely anything happened. Right. Yeah. I, th I think it was just a little puppy nip. Yeah. Right. A which, which Ka he's a tiny little dude. How big are his teeth? Even the, the puppy. Right. He's a puppy puppy. And Catherine even said, she's like, well, he's a puppy. He's going to do what a puppy does. Mm -hmm. So they acknowledge that, but it's just, it's so, <sighs> yeah. Like I understand trying to come up with a creative title mm -hmm. that draws people, people in. But when you're literally just lying and be like, mm -hmm. my dog bit my kid. There's this, just this moment. line you like, don't cross. Like it's just, and even if he did, bite and injure the kid like oh, i would mm -hmm. never want that to go into the public eye what the fuck because that it's... just makes you look like an idiot but they don't care they don't care all they care about is money and the ace family's hurting for money right now things yeah, aren't looking so good for are. them okay let's watch this clip yeah, let's watch it all right ace fam all right ace family today was a success we <laughs> all right guys uh we're about to get ready to close out today's video um uh, so <laughs> As you guys, so still got a scratch. It's now. Oh yeah, you're gonna say that. Yeah, okay. so so. All right, all right. So still, still is now up. I know I get it. Uh, he, he got scratch. He got scratch. All right, yeah. guys. All right, all right, guys. So now that steel is up, we can talk about what happened earlier. So basically, as you guys know, when you have a puppy, they tend to like nibble on you and bite and bite your clothes, bite your legs, bite your your feet. So steel was a little too close. Just a tiny little bit too close, and I saw it happen right in front of me. He was playing. He just Ace was like, playing with him. And he's a baby. Baby's like nipple. And I like, was like, oh my god, did he just get his eye? And I was freaking out, and then Austin kind of grabbed him and looked over and was like, oh, it's just his face. And he thought he had scratched him with his paw, but I saw his mouth. So with that being said, his cheek now looks great. I'll show you kind of what it looks like now. No, we don't want to show him his no. face. I was going to say, I'll show you a picture of what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. So, 
You nibbled them so, and then, and then I'll, sh I'll well, I guess we just pulled up as yeah. you can. Yeah, you so, so now we're good. So, so, like, so, so with that being said, now we're good. Okay. His cheek okay, looks no, fine. No, Everything looks fine. Uh, we just have to be really, really extra cautious. So other than the fact that this is just completely unethical and disgusting to watch, it's also just shocking that this gets uploaded to their channel, which is one of the biggest vlog channels on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They don't have an editor. Kathleen, Catherine says she edits all the vlogs herself. I don't believe that. I just don't understand how there's not someone watching through. I mean, when we put out any content, any podcast, we watch it through multiple times. We have like three sets of eyes. Yeah. And, and we don't do, you know, it's not like we're like hiding things and doing weird right, things, right. but just to make sure that it's clean and there's no editing mistakes. Yeah. So why wouldn't someone like a family, like the Ace family who has so, well, who knows how their finances are now, but why don't they have an editor? I think they do. You think they do? And, they, and so you think they're just, they're they put this out video. on purpose. Really? No, but I think they have an editor. And I don't think, you think that's this is embarrassing though. You know, it's no, you know, because it's, they don't they're they're beyond the point of embarrassing. They don't give a fuck. They're true. here to they're here to get views. They're here to get money. This is a business deal. And in fact, my conspiracy is that the two of them aren't even married. And that oh, this is so a many complete, people think that. Yeah, and that this is a complete setup and that they just go off and do whatever they want. And they're here to make money. This is a business deal. This is a business business ex exchange. Well, you can tell just by the way they're talking about it, you know, getting so annoyed that the kids are being loud, interrupting, that they're, it's, they can't get the exact way. You can tell there's a lot of pressure on Catherine from Austin to say it the exact perfect way and just yeah. make sure everything looks like they present themselves in this specific way. So it, it just seems, I guess they really could have done it on purpose. You could totally be right. It just seems like, you know, it's so a, stupid. I thought, I just thought about right now, if they do have like an editor on the side because it, it is kind of hard to believe that they don't have an editor like yeah. i do not they, for one second believe that Catherine's in there yeah edit. she says she does okay well people say a lot of things <laughs> it's true kendall what believes if, everyone <laughs> no i'm not <laughs> saying i believe her i'm just saying that's what they say i know, and, I know. Uh, well they do have an editor his ass should be fired whoever's doing it because this is the second time that this has happened yeah Maybe, I know. Yeah. Like, I'm saying like if they do have an editor and like the editor's trying to get back at them, like this is the perfect way to get back at them because yeah. this isn't the first time it's happened. No. Yeah. And honestly, true. do you really think that these fuckers are like going and like watching their vlogs again? Absolutely not. No. no probably they're not. not. They're not like no. they just want to get it up for the yeah, day, get exactly. the clickbait, get the views, get the money. And that's so like it. honestly, like yeah. they're just idiots, I guess. You could be completely right. <laughs> I guess I like to think that people would have some more self respect or conscience enough to do that, but <laughs> Sad. no not when because that's already out the window like they don't i don't think they have any interest in that it's more of like keeping the entertainment and the wow factor yeah, that's and true. the clickbait like it's more Catherine that i'm surprised about would be willing to do that austin nothing surprises yeah. me about him <laughs> right, i'm like come on yeah that's it's really you true know what's crazy too that i noticed while watching that was that they don't okay so like when austin was like talking to the to his son he was like he wasn't telling the kid anything he was talking to mm -hmm. Catherine. Mm -hmm. he was like he, so he was like telling her what to say but he was like in a baby voice talking to the son but directing it to Catherine. so like that's yeah. just so like weird not weird to me like it, it is weird to me but like it's so it doesn't so it make skewed. you think? it's so weird it's like not real it's no it's, no, it's, it's not, not real. real that's why i don't think any of this is real how do you think these kids feel watching their parents re-say things over again, saying, okay, okay, one more try, one more try, let's get it right this time? Well, sadly, it's all they know, I yeah, think. So think I don't they're think just they really, it? not that it's not I mean, subconsciously sure doing damage know. and yeah. creating trauma, but I think that in the moment, they don't really know, like, this is bad because I don't know if they have anything. They don't know any different. And they can't conceptualize all of this in a bigger picture. Like, you know, they don't, they don't know Yeah, as far as I'm aware. Well, it's very clear Especially that, the young ones. you know, Catherine and Austin act differently on camera than they do off camera since now we've seen all these off camera yeah. unedited moments, you know, especially Austin, which isn't shocking. I mean, this guy, he is so obsessed with himself. I've never seen such a narcissist. I think he's worse. Uh, I don't know. You think he's worse than the Pauls? Do you think he's worse than Jake? Who's worse? <laughs> McBroom or, or Paul? Jake I... Paul? Who's the biggest narcissist? Um... Fuck, I don't know. I, what always gets me about Austin is... I can't is, stand both of them. Honestly, putting those two head to head is really hard. <laughs> I know. I can't believe how old the uh, steel, the little boy is now. The last time I watched one of their honestly, vlogs was when he was... He, I didn't know either, but... Well, I did, but I didn't know how older he, how much older he's gotten. 
I watched his birth log and it was the most shocking thing. I've seen so many birth logs. I'm really interested in them. And I've been watching a ton of them lately because I've been yeah. just kind of trying to learn things. And then I, and theirs is the weirdest one on the internet. Austin makes it all about himself. Literally as she's giving birth, like right after his son comes out, he switches the camera over and puts it down on the ground and like films this up angle of him crying. And the <laughs> whole thing is about him. Like as she's giving birth to their baby, there's barely any footage of her and the baby. It's mostly like him flipping it back to himself crying. I mean, this guy, so it's all a business to him. It's all image. And of course, everyone knows the yeah. rumors that they're not even together and it's a business. It kind of seems that way. And I think they purposely um, upload these things those as well. Kids. Maybe those poor, those poor kids. Oh, yeah. I feel so bad. Yeah, There's, I feel terrible for them. It's not just, I mean, there are thousands of vlog channels all over the world exploiting their kids in terrible ways. I recently saw a family who had experienced, like they had a little day trip to the beach and they had a run-in with a shark that just like swam by them. And they made it into this hugely dramatic thing, filmed all the kids crying at back at the hotel, like screaming, crying and clickbaited it like shark attack at the beach. And they just literally saw a shark. <laughs> And it's things like that. There's there's Ugh, so many more examples. My God. See, that's and it's a shame that you had to take it to the, the extreme because mm -hmm. I'm not sitting over here being like, no one should have family vlogs. Like, I don't mm -mm. I'm not like saying that every family vlogger is terrible and like not every showing single, your kid online no. when you have a presence is terrible. Like but showing them in distressing private in distress. moments or when they're sick or they're hurt or crying or in the bath or in the bathroom that exists. People are uploading content like that. Yeah. I know every day. Yeah. And it's only people like Jordan and the ACE family that get the attention and get caught and get shit for it. But it is rampant on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's completely out of control. I'm surprised YouTube doesn't have like some kind of policy for they need to. For, they like, children. absolutely need yeah. to. I think in the next uh, let's hope, especially since they in have the next fucking few years, we'll YouTube see that. kids. Yeah. Like, that's so odd to me that they don't have like some kind of like oh. some kind of like thing for like to protect YouTube their kids. Is a I think scary it'll place. take some sort place. of lawsuit. Um, yeah. of one of these kids to be old enough to realize what the fuck is going on. And, Maybe. And I was going to say, yeah, because it, it, you're right. Like, all the kids are kids right now. And this is, mm -hmm. family vlogging is so new that there are no adults that were once a child vlogger. Like, right. how there are adults who were once a child actor. Or this doesn't this exist yeah. in the vlogging community because it's so new that, mm -hmm. like you said, there's just now starting to become kids that are old enough to be like, the fuck? And, you know, decide that they want to get out of it or not. Um but yeah, I, I mean, especially when you are on one of those daily vlog channels and you've been on every single day and have had, I think some parents do a good job of making sure that they keep it more focused on them. And it's like their vlog channel right. and not really about their kids or they will make sure that anything that's shown is like positive moments, just mm -hmm. lighthearted things and they don't exploit trauma or it's just, it's sad to me that when accidents happen or they, you know, when families have to go to the hospital or their kid breaks their leg, their first instinct is to whip out the camera and make money off of it. Yeah. Where's your conscience? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But that's what money does to people. But then it's like reality TV does that too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, But at least there's some laws. Some, yeah. Yeah. Some. Some kind of protection. Ones, barely any, but, but. Some kind of protection. I guess there's like in reality on TV, YouTube. the camera crew isn't there 24-7 Mm -mm. you know at the drop of a hat picking up a camera you know there's kind of like scheduled about how timing. often the kids can be filmed yeah and, mm -hmm. yeah but it's still a problem and tons of reality tv children have had issues as well and these kids you know there's no law about getting compensated once you do turn 18 and even like not vloggers like that um ryan's toy ryan's channel oh, whatever. yeah toy i mean he's like that. working he's one of the biggest day. channels on and the is platform. he making money does he have money set aside for him i don't know because i don't know the i don't know if i think there's any there's laws behind it i don't think there are i think he was worth 11 million last time wow. yeah but it's like no he, he doesn't he, have he's that not, money he's not mm -hmm. worth a million uh, 11, 11 million the brand his, of him his, his but, parents and unless their parents on their own seek out some type of contract or account right. to make sure that it all like goes back to their kid sure. then it's just a free-for-all and they can literally make money off of him and he may never see a dime not saying that that's happening let's hope that that ryan kid is making some money off of himself yeah Maybe, i like, mean he's, he's, it, he is the face of it like, yeah. he is ryan i'm he's, sure he will but there's so many kids out there that'll never see a dime and they've just been exploited for no reason and the their ace, parents spend the it kids. all 
yeah, by the time those kids are older, who knows where their finances will be at? Because they're not looking good now. No, they're not. Yeah, I don't know. It's very, very controversial. Controversial. And I don't know the right answer. Mm -mm. Because it's not black and white. It's not as easy of like, get all the kids off the internet (laughs) who are in blogs. It's really hard. Yeah. But it's such a personal thing that it's like hard to make laws around. Yeah. Well, it's like, how do you control people in their own home with their own camera and their own uploading? Right. There's a free country. Like you can upload video. I mean, but there should be more action taken on YouTube for content, especially of kids in distress situations and just pure exploitation. I do agree with that. It's going to start with the platform. That's the only way. Yes. Um, So to clarify what we're, what we mean by the ACE families, you know, financial issues. Oh, yeah. There's been rumors that their house is foreclosing on. Yeah. They've been caught up in several lawsuits suits since the Austin Social Gloves event. Yeah, you YouTubers versus TikToker boxing match where it didn't pay anybody yet. <laughs> um, the family is also being rumored to sell their house after these lawsuits. I guess they've denied that, though. Hmm. Who knows? But they've he denied most of this. Yeah, they deny like, pretty much yeah. all of it. They denied the allegations of the seven million dollar mansion that's going up for uh, foreclosure. Well, if that's true, then that right there basically proves those kids aren't going to see any of this money because that's what they I'm don't saying. have the money. <laughs> and even though Catherine and Austin have denied these allegations, legal documents have surfaced, which yeah. read that their home will be sold to, sold to the highest bidder for cash. The house will be put up on auction on September 28th. That's going to be a big day. Damn. Britney document comes out. Seriously. Okay. And yeah, that's going to help them pay off their debts. According to this new document, they owe over $9.3 million. Not good, guys. Huh. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Yep. That is wild. I don't know. I don't know. It's very touchy subject. Let us know if you want us to talk like more about this. Family vlogging. Yeah, family and- vlogging in the whole child protection laws on youtube yeah. and how that how needs that to break come down. about yeah exactly yeah um of course we wanted to end this by chatting about brooke Houts, yeah um who was the other i guess most famous accidental mm-hmm. upload in youtube history mm-hmm. where she recorded a video of herself um spitting on her dog punching her dog her doberman named sphinx yeah and this she's tried to come back to the internet i mean she many times Many times, yeah. I don't know if she's been at it at all. I haven't seen anything on her. She lately. was like making these videos. How she's like learning five new months. things. Then she, five months, five yeah. months ago is her last update upload. Mm. She should yeah. probably just stay she's, off. Oh, I think I'm pretty sure her um her sub has gone down significantly. Oh yeah, well I know she was like trying to come back, yeah. and then I think yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like so brutal that. Well, remember yeah. her crazy like boyfriend started making videos yeah. for her and speaking for her and like yelling yeah, at everyone wild. and what? preaching this role. Yeah. He would, he was these like crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, we talked about disturbing. that on the sesh. I remember yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Not good at all. The poor dog. And because of that upload, PETA demanded that platforms like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter enact a zero tolerance policy for anyone who posts any form of animal abuse. You'd think that would already be in place. That hasn't happened. Mm -mm. People Mm -mm. are uploading disgusting videos that involve animals all over the fucking internet in these um, apps. So why are they not doing anything about it? Because clearly we're only going to see more and more of this as the years go on. And if no one's being held responsible by... I mean, people are holding them responsible. They're being yeah. canceled. But legally. But yeah, legally or by the platform. You know, they don't. Yeah. I mean, they should have let's their be channels real. YouTube terminated. has never had much of a backbone for coming no. out. And I mean, look at the David Dobrik. I mean, there's a million and a half mm-hmm. examples of when YouTube's been like, eh, just kind of ignore it. But then they've deleted random videos of mine that have made no sense of why they've deleted them. Random podcasts of ours. Yeah. And we've never gotten an answer of why. Mm hmm. They just remove it. Mm-hmm. Very bizarre. It's like they're focused on all the wrong things. There's so much bad. There's a lot of bad. There. And I get it too is like there's so much content because like it's not again like TV shows. Not anyone can just upload to TV. You have to, you have to be selected and have a contract and have a you know channel that you're working with and blah, blah, blah. But YouTube is a free for all. Yeah. Anyone can upload a yep. YouTube video. There's a gazillion YouTube videos being uploaded every single day. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we can have AI try and sift through things. But obviously, as of now, AI is not the same as having a human sift through and right. decide what is ad friendly and what is not or what should be on and what should not. 
But like, there's not enough people, I feel like in the world to do that with how much content is constantly being thrown yeah, into it would, that. It would be very hard platform. to monitor it and take care of it as it becomes a problem and take care of it, right? you know, as soon as it's out. Yeah. It can't just, it's hard. Yeah, AI can't detect ethics, right? Right. So yeah. it's when there's times like this where people are, are you know, reporting things to YouTube and they just don't do anything about it. But YouTube's very aware of what a problem is children on the internet are yes um, you know like you said there are people who do it right there are people who post you know very limited of their children and then there's people that completely exploit them and it's just sad to me that that's just gone like okay that's just how it is apparently this is how we do things mm-hmm. true you know yeah it's a really really interesting conversation it because it's it's truly shocking i think most people when they hear that there is nothing in place and no type of protection for yeah. kids on youtube that's pretty shocking to hear but i think one thing that is interesting to think about is the fact that for some of these kids having this platform at a young age brings you a lot of opportunities that you it's would true. not have other got otherwise gotten mm -hmm. and so it's yeah. kind of a, like again a double edged sword because it's like, yeah, you didn't ask to be born into this, but a lot of these kids are reaping the benefits or getting free trips to Disney and getting yeah. PR boxes and getting and that's what a lot of families make that argument. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that they, their kids wouldn't have the life that they do if they didn't do this content. And that is that is a fact, right? For them, like yeah. most of the time, you wouldn't be getting free trips to Disney if you didn't have some type of influence. Mm -hmm. Does that make it right? I don't know. And it, how worth it are those trips to Disney when you grow up and you have trauma from being exploited right. on the internet and thousands <laughs> of people knowing you? I mean, you can't even at that age understand really what that means mm -mm. and the gravity of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't, it's, it's crazy that people can actually upload these things. That That just blows my mind. When you have thousands of followers to not double check what you're uploading, and just include these long bits like that ace family clip is like long. seven minutes unedited where there's several different parts that they clearly wanted edited out i mean how lazy can you be so maybe you're right maybe they are just doing this on purpose i don't <sighs> think Catherine's making the mistake because i don't think she's editing this could they come up with something a little better if they're really trying to like make a fake incident yeah but then i feel like uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you could. Maybe they do make stuff up. I mean, they they do no, on they thumbnails do. and shit. So, and yeah. like you said, the kids, that one family with the shark screaming yeah. in the hotel. Yeah. I'm sure that wasn't naturally occurring. I'm sure the no. parents were freaking them out. And Yeah. Well, when the, when it first happened, the kids were like laughing yeah. on the beach and right. they were recording it. Right. But then as soon as they got back to the hotel and the dad started talking about how traumatizing it was and how scared right. they were, we could have died. The kids are like hysterically screaming there in the shot as the dad's explaining it all. Jesus. It's like, why are you not comforting your child who is here? Well, why are you making so it worse? Scared. Like, do you know how scary this could have been? This could have happened. You wouldn't otherwise naturally say that, I would assume. Because it's payday, baby. They hear, right. hmm, we don't have that many interesting things going on today. We're just at the exactly. beach. But now there's a shark attack. Exactly. <laughs> it's so sad. It, it's really, it's sick. You know, when, I can't imagine when using your, kids, your own child like that. It's one thing, like you said, to have your own channel and make it about you and yeah you show your kids you feature your kids or whatever Every once in a while especially but if it's not on a daily like let's say they're not in the video you're like you're not relying on your kids for the content you, yes you know you if they don't want to be if they're sick if you whatever whatever the circumstance you can still make a video without putting your kid in it it's, it becomes mm -hmm. an issue when now all of a sudden you're like I can't put up a vlog because my kids aren't in it or my kids aren't interesting enough or funny enough or scared, scared enough, whatever it is. And so now you're like, the, the wheels are turning up. Okay, I can't put up a vlog. I'm going to have bad views. I'm not going to make good ad revenue. My channel is going to go downhill. They have to keep one upping their own selves. And so it's like crazy to think that these little kids are the things that you are relying on for your content that that's the fucking issue part of your business right model. you are relying on them to pay yeah. your bills that is an issue rather than oh i feature my kids because it's fun and yeah. cute and i love my kids um but at the end of the day i'm the one that's bringing the money in not mm -hmm. my kids mm -hmm. yeah I, yes i completely agree with that because obviously there i mean even people that don't have a following still share their kids on the yeah, internet and post totally. to Facebook and Instagram right. and you can't just ban people from yeah. showing and their children. And I don't children. think that's fair to be like, just because you have followers, yeah. you can no longer share your kids. Like, what the fuck? But it's it the exploiting of the, the horrific moments, the yeah. drama, the pain. Where is your conscience as a parent? 
I mean, I know there's money involved, but how, at what point right. do you lose that sense? Like, what are you going to start doing live streaming their therapy sessions? Yeah, <laughs> like, seriously, I'm fuck? sure they would if they could. Like, right. oh, oh, I'm sure they would. That's honestly one of them will take you up on that idea. They're like, sure. wow, Janelle, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, HIPAA will come right for your ass with that. But yeah. Well, we have been talking about this for quite a bit. Yeah. Um, If you would like us to talk more about this issue at large and other than just accidental uploads and these three examples, we can definitely put that together Mm -hmm. and share more of our thoughts. For sure. But that is going to be it for us for this week's sesh. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. We will see you in the next sesh. But until then, keep it fresh. fresh.